You are now ready to begin Lab 3, Pressure versus Temperature. Let's review again the proper setup of the LabQuest. Make sure you're on the main screen of the LabQuest 2. On the left side, you should see the large red box displaying readings from whatever probe are plugged in at that time. Today, you're going to have the temperature probe as well as the gas pressure sensor probe. In the upper right corner, select Events with Entry from the Mode drop-down menu. Your event today is going to be temperature, and your unit can either be in degrees Celsius or Kelvin. Make sure, though, that this corresponds to the unit you selected on the main screen in the temperature box. Alternatively, you can adjust between Kelvin and Celsius simply by adding 273 to the Celsius temperature to get Kelvin or subtracting 273 to go from Kelvin to Celsius. You should have three 250 milliliter beakers at your workstation. In one of these beakers, add about two-thirds full of water, so around 150 to 200 milliliters of water in the beaker and set on a hot plate. You want the water to reach a temperature above 60 degrees Celsius, but you really do not wish it to go above 80 degrees, so we're not boiling the water. In the second beaker, add about the same amount of tap water and allow it to sit to come to room temperature. And in the third beaker, add a mix of ice and water, again, about the same volume. This time, instead of using the syringe, we have a very small Erlmeyer flask, about 50 milliliters, with a stopper and a lure lock connection. We're going to attach our lure lock from the gas pressure sensor to that stopper, just like we did with the syringe. Again, finger tight, but not so tight that we warp the connection. Now, starting with the room temperature water, place your temperature probe inside and wait until you have a stable reading, in this case 20.4 degrees Celsius. Then take our Erlenmeyer, place it deep inside the water. We want the entire flask to be covered with water. It doesn't have to go above the stopper, but that all the air inside has to come to temperature. To make sure, set a timer for about one minute. Do not take a reading until you've had enough time for the air inside to reach the same temperature as the exterior of the flask. Repeat this process again for your hot water as well as your cold water. I prefer to do the ice first and then go into the hot water. When you do this, allow again for at least one minute for the air inside to equilibrate to the temperature of the outside of the flask. As you measure each point, remember to use events with entry by hitting the keep button and then typing in the actual temperature at the time that you are making the measurement. If you are doing this correctly, when you check in graph mode, you should see a linear relationship, a direct relationship between temperature and pressure. All right, now let's use the kinetic molecular theory to explain. If pressure is due to contacts, then why in part one did we see a direct relationship between pressure and particles? Why in part two did we see an inverse relationship between pressure and volume? And now why in part three did we see a direct relationship between pressure and temperature? Now, in this last part, if you plot pressure versus Celsius, you see a different type of line than if you plot pressure versus Kelvin. Do you see from these two plots a reason why it is better to use Kelvin than Celsius when we study gases? If your group has come up with an explanation for those questions, I'd like you to think about laws now. Laws are used to predict. So in your group, use the data you got from part three, temperature versus Kelvin, and the general equation for a straight line, making your y-intercept be zero. If you substitute pressure and temperature for y and x, try rewriting the equation. If you were to solve for slope, how would your equation look? Now, that doesn't predict anything. That helped to solve what the slope is, but I want to know about a point farther down on the line. So, could you come up with a relationship that would let us solve for, say, pressure or temperature of a second point given one variable and the slope. 
Now as a lab group, once you've got all of this written down, I want you to take an iPad and the Lego Story Visualizer and I want you to create a lab report. You've been taking pictures and you've been writing down data. Now put it together into a lab report. Your lab handout will give you the details of what is required and be prepared to share it with your instructor. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you in class. Thank <laughs> you.